Well, if there is a place in the world that I really feel confident of releasing the word that God gives me, this is one of the places. Because uh, I've been with uh, Pastor Ashley, Pastor Neil, and I've said some of the most shocking things. And they've just received it. <laughs> yeah. And this week I've heard some of the sh most shocking things. <laughs> then I can just say, my hands are free. So I will just follow your full step, man. <laughs> you began, we continue. But you see, I like to not just preach, and I want to make some statements before I begin to preach tonight. I want you to know for sure that definitely you have not just come to another conference. And I have come here not to preach. I've been sent here on assignment. So, this week, I am just going to be carrying out a definite assignment. An assignment that is meant to deliver something to you personally. When I got the uh, topic of the conference, definitely that's what I normally do. I went to God to receive definite instructions and word that he would like me to deliver in this conference. So that is to say, these messages you will be hearing this week, I got four of them from him. <laughs> these messages you're going to be having this, listening to this week, I mean definitely, I've never preached them before anywhere. Because I've never heard them before. <laughs> so you need to listen closely. It's not just another preaching. Something sent from your father to transform you and to make you attain to the height he's got in store for you. So a definite word for you, I've never preached it. Just for you. And that's how I preach. Anywhere I go, I never preach one message. So I get a definite word for that particular meeting. If I don't hear a certain new thing for those people, I don't go to this stage. So you have something fresh for your benefit, for your blessing this way. And of course, considering my accent... You've got to follow really closely. <laughs> but you, you won't have a problem with that. Now I've been here in uh, Australia for a couple of days, so I'm switching over to English because back at home I don't preach in English. I preach in Russian language because I'm pastoring Russian, Ukraine, Ukrainians, and all that. But now I'm getting back. Taking my English Bible with me, and uh, we can go. All right, let's open our Bibles to the book of Obadiah. If you know where that is in the Bible, <laughs> Obadiah, that is just before the book of Jonah, and after the book of Amos. After the book of Amos, just before the book of Jonah, world changers. Anybody got it? Yeah. And you know, I would advise you to take up your pen and your paper also. When this preacher preaches, you have something to write, for sure. For sure. Obadiah. Someone says, what chapter? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, that means you are a very good friend of the Bible. <laughs> From the distance. <laughs> well, when you open Obadiah, you find out that it doesn't really have too many chapters. <laughs> it's got just one. <laughs> so you don't ask what chapter, you ask what verse. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody following us today? <laughs> you sure do it. Well, what verse? Verse 21. The last verse in the book. Obedea, verse 21. It says, Then saviors shall come to Mount Zion to judge the mountains of Israel, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Now, I know that this is a church that is mature enough to assimilate and to receive any revelation from the Lord. Now, this passage is talking about the kingdom. And it says, something shall happen, then the kingdom of God, shall, the kingdom of this world shall be the Lord's. The kingdom shall be the Lord's. Talking about the kingdom. You remember when Jesus was talking about his departure, he said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations as a witness, and only then shall the end come. The gospel of the kingdom. Underline the word, the kingdom. That is in Matthew 24, verse 14. The gospel of the kingdom shall, in, sh shall possess, shall be spread. It shall overcome, it shall spread all over this earth. Then shall he come. The gospel of the kingdom must take over. The kingdom, the reality of the kingdom must arrive, must come. To every nation. Only after then. He will come. And you see. Jesus has not yet come. You wonder why? why? You think it's because there are no churches in all the countries of the world? I tell you there are churches everywhere. Even in Saudi Arabia there are churches. In every country of the planet today there are churches. But you know why Jesus is still not coming? People are preaching everywhere. So the, 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 the statement there in Matthew 24, 14 is not just for the kingdom to be preached or for churches to be established in every nation. The reality of the world that Jesus was trying to tell us and convey to us is that, look, this oath was meant to be a prototype of the kingdom of God. And just because man was made in God's image. So God wanted man to be Lord, to rule. Just on, on the earth, just like he rules over the universe. Because he is God, he is a ruler, he is a Lord, he is the Lord of the universe. So he made a small piece of the universe he called it off and gave it to us so that we might rule and the, the earth was supposed to be a prototype of heaven that is why Matthew 6 verse 10 when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray he said pray like this our father who art in heaven and the very first demand request and prayer in that Lost prayer was this. 
let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Why did God, well, why did Jesus make that the first request in that Lord's Prayer? Listen closely. Because Jesus knew the intent, the original intent of God the Father. He knew that God the Father created the earth for it to be a kind of photocopy, prototype of heaven. So what was lost in the Garden of Eden was not just man that fell into sin. Something greater than that was lost. A kingdom was lost. So when Jesus came to the world, when if I ask you the question, why did Jesus come to the world? You might answer me, why to save, to, to save the sinners, to save the world, to, 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 to save us, to take us to heaven. Not true. That is, part, that is part of the truth, but not the whole truth. Actually, there is something much more important in the agenda of Jesus coming than just saving the man. God created a kingdom for himself. He called it the earth. He put a man, the man he created in his own image over the earth to rule and be just like him. And cause the reality of heaven to rule on earth. That was the original plan. For, for man to look at God, see everything God does, how he does it, and bring the joy of heaven to the earth, bring the happiness of heaven to the earth, bring the excitement of heaven to the earth, full fruitfulness of heaven to the earth, multiplication of heaven to the earth. That was the original intent. So, so what God lost or what man lost in the, kingdom, in the garden of Eden was not just man. Man lost the kingdom. God's small kingdom on the earth. So when Jesus came and there was a prophecy about the angels, I mean from the angel about the ministry of Jesus in Luke chapter 1, verses 33 to 35, he says, his kingdom shall be everlasting. He was talking about Jesus coming to restore the kingdom. So Jesus coming is not just about saving the sinner. The primary objective of Jesus coming, listen closely, is to redeem the earth. To take back the kingdom that was lost. To gain it back. To remove it from the hand of Satan. Because Satan became the temporal and the false God, Lord of the earth. That is, is not his belonging. It doesn't belong to him. The earth is the Lord's. So Jesus came to restore the earth and to bring the kingdom of heaven on it. To restore the kingdom. Jesus came to restore the kingdom of heaven on earth. That is why 85% of his messages were about what? About the kingdom of God. That is the primary purpose. The primary assignment. He came to bring back heaven. To restore the kingdom of heaven on earth. And as a means of establishing and spreading that kingdom on earth, taking it over from Satan, he needed to save the man. Because the man is the image of God that was supposed to rule on earth. And see, look at the Father, bring the realities of heaven on the earth. It, the man was the one that was, was supposed to do all that. That is why the, in, the prime, the, the, in a, a principal key in redemption is man. You understand? Man who is supposed to take over the earth back and bring the kingdom of God and establish it on all the earth. Are you really following me? That's why when Jesus said you should pray, all believers, the priority and number one request in all your prayers should be this. Kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. So when I'm in business, when, why am I in business? Why am I making money? If you are in business and you don't understand this concept that the primary objective of God, of a believer, 
is to make the kingdom of heaven to possess the king's business world. That's why I'm in business. I'm in business to bring the reality of the kingdom of heaven into that part of the business. And if you are a preacher, you don't know that your primary objective of preaching is not to build your church, you will, have, you will become sectarian. Because actually, as believers, as preachers, our primary objective is to look at God, to see how heaven is like, to see the kingdom of heaven through the scriptures, through Jesus, and to transplant it and spread it over and cause it to dominate and overcome the system of this world we call earth. Yeah. By so doing, we are regaining the earth and we are using the kingdom to overcome. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, unless I, and until this message of the kingdom, the superiority of the kingdom, the victory of the kingdom, until it spread the reality, the life of the kingdom, yeah. until it spread all over the nations of the earth, I will not come. That is why we are all called to be world changers. Listen closely. Heaven is waiting for the time we will do that. Open your Bibles to, don't close over there, please. We will go back there. Just open your Bible briefly to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation 11, verse 15. Now, what I'm telling you now is just the introduction, right? Just for you to have an idea of where I'm going. I've, I've, I've not started the message yet. I've not even given you the topic. So what I've said so far is just to prepare you, to give you foundation, so that when I start talking, you will not say I'm speaking heresy. <coughs> Revelation eleven fifteen. <laughs> then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. You see the goal? Can you see the aim? Can you see the objective? Yeah. Can you see where we are going? Yeah. Can you see the direction? So that, why are we preaching the gospel? Why are we building churches? Why are we in business? Why are we in sports? So that the kingdoms of this world might become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ and so that he might reign on earth forever and only after we have done a good job at that the job of spreading that kingdom the superiority the advantages of that kingdom and the power the influence of that kingdom only after we must have succeeded in spreading it all over the earth Jesus looks at us and says you are doing a good job. Now I will come myself and take over. Now I can come. That is what he's talking about, about Christ coming. So some people are busy saying, well, because Osama bin Laden bombed New York, it means the end time has come. So Jesus is coming back now. How many books have been written? Jesus is coming back now. Rubbish! by people who did not understand the concept of the gospel. Oh, man. Listen closely. God, had a, God had an idea. He created a world, called it of the Garden of Eden. He created a man, said, in my image, rule like I rule, be in my likeness, just like I am, be the same. I am Lord over the universe. You be the Lord of this small planet. This is a small place. Because when you compare the planet or Earth, or, or the planet Earth to the universe, it's about hundreds of millions of times smaller than even galaxies. One galaxy. 
So it's just a small place. Oh, it's not a big thing. So if you think you're a big man because you are oh, you, you a president or something, forget about it. <laughs> not in God's sense. Not in God's sense. So God just gave us this small planet, Earth, and say, you are small. You are my image. You are like me. Do like me. I rule in righteousness. I reign in truth. I reign a little ruling glory. Bring that glory down. Administer it. And that is what we saw in the Garden of Eden. So what God is after now is that this whole earth was taken over by Satan because of the fall of man. He said, okay, no problem. I will restore that. So he sent Jesus, the Savior of the earth, who made us to know that restoration of the kingdom of God upon the earth is possible. He said, if I do this by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. He carried the kingdom. He said, wherever I come, if I come to you and I did this in the finger of God, by the spirit of God, I've brought the kingdom. He was a kingdom carrier. He said, I brought the kingdom unto you. He said, don't look for it again. Now that I've come, the kingdom is in you. Now you carry it and dominate the earth by it. 